There we go. Jeez. I'm really, uh, I'm really slow with this stuff. Okay. What are we doing today? Um, so hello everybody. Welcome to the, uh, the bathroom. Painting bathroom. Uh, today we're going to paint these, uh, these nice little color pots. I don't know what you call them. They're Oh, planters. That's what they're called. Planters. Um, we went on a little trip yesterday, a little field trip, to look at a bunch of cacti and plants and came across this really cool um, planters store. They had like hundreds of gigantic pots. Um, but anyway, hey, Ino, 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 Ino. I've seen your paintings on Instagram, I think. Ino, 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 Ino. It's looking really good. What's what's your name on Instagram? Sometimes you guys switch around your names and I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I saw you signing your, your paintings. Sparsely, oh, okay, Sparselino, holy crap. Yeah, your stuff is crazy good. Um, really good. Sparselino. Um, yeah, Sparselino, what are you... What's your background? Are you in, in animation or are you an illustrator? I really love the that um the painting with the uh the grocery store all the uh the fruits in the in the packaging one is really awesome. I seen it. Um, yeah, let's try and get this greenness in here. Hey, Jim. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back. Just throw some shadows in here, and then I'm gonna try to find some music to play. Damn, Sparcelino's student. He's gonna. You're, okay, you're gonna be a monster painter then, if you're a student right now. That's crazy. You guys, um, who are here, you should, if you haven't already seen. The stuff uh, Sparcelino's doing, Ch check him out. Check him or her out on uh, Instagram at Sparcelino underscore L. Oh, hey, Wim Saj. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the background. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about these. Uh, these Freddy, Freddos, Freddies. Oh, okay. Correction on Sparcelino. Check out his uh, paintings. Him, his or hers? I don't know. Are you a guy or a girl?
All right, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm pretty, it's crazy how, yeah, some of you guys are, are like, uh, really consistent, just painting every single day and putting out this awesome work. It's really cool to see. The lasso painting thing is really fun. Yeah. Yeah, lasso is my favorite. Because you can do like 90% of what you need to do with just the lasso. It's so easy. How did I come up with lasso? Well, I didn't come up with it. I um, I used to use this program uh, back in school called um, Alchemy. Alchemy. It was an open source uh, software, and it had a really cool lasso tool. And I always remember it, and was like, and I would always look for that tool in other programs. But it's very rare. Like, not that many. Photoshop doesn't have that. Um, Procreate, I, I don't think has it. A lot of programs don't have it. But for me, that was like my favorite tool ever. And then so once I started working on heavy paint, that was like one of the first things I, I wanted to have, the, the fill, fill tool. Can we have the photo? It should be in the description, no? Description of the video? Unless I forgot to stick it in there. Yeah, tools are kind of fun to me. I, I really enjoy thinking about tools and making them, actually. I feel like it's, uh, I like imagining like what you can do with a new tool or how it would make things faster or easier. Like, I don't know, do you guys have any ideas for some kind of a tool that would be really speed things up for you? Yeah, let's let's bring out the fill tool just since we're on the subject. This is the fill tool that we're talk we're all talking about here. It's very simple. I mean, it's just drawing a shape. But a lot of programs don't have this. The ability to draw a shape. Hmm. Who would have thought? Hey, artists might actually want that. Yep, we we do like our shapes. Silly, silly little artist. Uh oh. All right, yeah. Part of the morning too. <laughs> uh, hmm. Kirk is uh dyslexic. Actually, I shouldn't joke about that, but he's he's acting dyslexic right now. Um. Brow is underrated. Yeah, brow is pretty dope too. Hey, HP, wondering if Lan PR, the sketch shader, where can I get that? Look up Lan PR. The guy's name is Yiming Wu. Just type in Lan PR. I, I actually don't know how it works. I haven't um, downloaded it yet, but uh, uh, yeah, look him up. Lan, Lan PR. Oh, 
okay the maybe i forgot to put the photo in there cena sorry about that let me let me load it in by the way there should be um uh, a link in the description guys do you see a link that that says reference in the video description because um that's I'm, I'm i'm adding this photo right now to the references link so it should be in there now hopefully are you guys seeing this am i crazy did i forget to put the link in the chat or in the in the description of the video why did i feel sliders were better than a color wheel because you get more um you're using up more space with a rectangle than you are with a, a circle so imagine here if my uh my colors were limited to just a circle here i'd be wasting a ton of space and i wouldn't have that same amount of space and control to to move the colors around and you know if you're trying to adjust the color on a tiny little dot you, you won't have the accuracy that you need so this is all about accuracy and being really really subtle with your colors so that that's the whole idea i i am planning to add in a color rectangle later so instead of having sliders it's just going to be like a big color gradient like what you see in photoshop and stuff but that's uh, coming soon round brush would be be nice we do have a round brush it's it's right here under d and then circles see this is a round brush right here um i know a lot of people are requesting layers opacity and all sorts of other things but it's nice to have those limitations yeah for now i i think i'm gonna keep it without layers I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this without layers so I, i'm sure it's going to happen in the future some at some point but for now i'm i'm uh cherishing the uh the simple times we live in <laughs> let's see so maybe this color here it looks really gray and a little bit too dark so what I need more yellow and red so more red and green because green has yellow in it that's the closest thing I've got to yellow so let's see how that looks hey that's a lot closer right much better and then I'll probably okay and then in the middle is basically white so that means everything everybody goes all the way up top Something like that. Okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, fill is really good for chopping these shapes away. You can draw a C shape with fill, like this. If you draw a C shape, you get a sharp edge always. So that's what I use to chop um, straight edges. <laughs> So like if I if I need this this uh bowl up here I might just draw a, sh a C shape. It's done. I got the top edge automatically. Um I should probably do these in order as well. Keep things easier. I need to be really careful with the proportions of this this painting because I it's a lot of little shapes and I could probably get lost in it very easily. So I need to really try to make set up like some major landmarks for myself first. Shit, set up some la major landmarks so I don't get lost because there's is this is just a very tricky like there's so many shapes going on 
So what can my landmarks be? Maybe this this uh, orange little strip of light that's coming through would be a good landmark. To me, it's happening. It's happening like uh, a little bit to the left of the center. So it's actually right about there. Maybe I need to do a little bit of drawing. Maybe it's like that. Okay, and then everything over here should be pretty dark. freelance or are you working on something now I'm working on heavy paint so full-time I I'm I'm saying I'm clearing my schedule I'm just working on heavy heavy paint right now so please buy the brushes so I can so I can continue working on it otherwise I'm gonna have to take some freelance but yeah I'm this year I'm trying to focus on it because uh, yep I, I want to see how far it can go and so far it's been it's been fun. I mean like just seeing the paintings from everyone is really encouraging. And yeah, I just want to keep going. This is like my passion project, I guess, and I hope I can work on it for as long as possible. Thanks, Regina. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, it's all you guys, like, if nobody cared about it I would have stopped a long time ago but it seems like like um, I mean you guys are using it some some of you are using it a lot like every day almost <laughs> which is crazy and and people seem to be passionate like I mean passionate in a good way and and passionate about reporting bugs and being like hey this is broken hey can you add in this Hey, I want <laughs> I want this feature. Make it le make it right-handed, make it left-handed, make it have RGB, HSV, blah blah blah. And honestly, it's all very exciting. I'm, I'm like having a lot of fun just like doing whack-a-mole like, "Ah, get that bug, get that bug, get that bug." Um Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm very ex I like every day when I wake up I'm really excited to to keep working and like I check I'm constantly checking my phone now and like oh I wonder if someone made a new painting It's like Christmas Oh shoot What is it built in? It's built in uh, Godot engine or Godot which is uh, an open source video game engine it's really an awesome engine and I'm I'm this is my first r real program that I'm making and the really cool thing about Godot engine is the uh the documentation or the the help file is not just a help file it's actually like a whole class they they teach you they actually teach you how to program um so it's been very educational um 
using Godot Engine. So, yeah, if any of you guys are want to learn programming, you should try Godot Engine or Python. It's really fun. But I do realize that most artists do not have any interest in programming, so... <laughs> Yeah, I do realize this. Actually, a lot of artists do like hate computers in general. Some some are are really computer nerds, like Kirk, and me. But but there's a lot that just hate computers and like arch nemesis is computers. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's doable. They, it's relatively easy, yeah. Um, some of the stuff you have to dig around a lot to figure out things, but but the engine itself is amazing. I'm trying to get some of these shadows in here before I start chopping away. So maybe if I overpaint back here on the floor. When I say overpaint, I mean to extend the, the, the gradient beyond the edges. Then maybe we can uh, chop it away with the fill. Just chop it like that. There. Now we got the gradient-ish. <laughs> sort of. Oh, that's red. So even the red looks blue down here in the shadows. Oh, thanks, Didi. Um, Regina says, it's the same when you start to stream in heavy paint and a huge wave of inspiration comes in. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope this little routine is, is, is helping to well, it's helping me definitely because I feel like now I have uh, some good practice going in, but I hope you guys will join in too. I know some of you have been painting along, practicing. Actually, yeah, there's like maybe four or five consistent. Angela's been doing some really nice ones. And then yeah, hopefully we'll have like a little backlog of these eventually and then it's going to be a little um, guide on how to use heavy paint or, or just how to paint like this in general. So what, what was I doing? Landmarks, right? I'm just trying to make sure that there's nothing really obviously wrong here in terms of uh, proportions and stuff before I get too carried away with details. And then back here, this one is more 
not sure what color this is. It's like, it's a more bluish type of green, I think. See, the, the greens always screw me up. Like, I can't really tell what green is what. Greens are so tricky. Okay, and then this blue pillar. Okay, I don't know if I should try to make it brighter now while we have the chance. Because once I add in the shadows, then it's going to be annoying. Yeah, so maybe it's easier to just do it now. Before the shadows. It's pretty bright. And then it's just a tiny bit less on the other side. And oops. This definitely is is uh, much darker. Yep, more in that range. Um, and I guess a tiny bit brighter on this side. So that's why having those gigantic sliders is really, I mean, necessary for this kind of painting, because you need to make like super tiny adjustments sometimes. And you, you can't do that with a tiny little, like a shitty, color picker. You need a big, nice meaty, meaty uh, color picker. Okay. All right, Luca. Awesome. Um, hi, Kara. Welcome, welcome. Let's see, this angle comes down more. Um, back to tools. I'm thinking of maybe adding to the shape tool, rectangle, circle, having some more transformation options like what Control T does. You mean like? So you can um, draw out a rectangle and then you can rotate the rectangle or something like that. Or draw a circle and then make us an ellipse type of a thing. Can you think of a way we could do that with just the one pen? Like, how would it work? Would it be like, first you drag it, and then you let go? Or maybe you drag it, and then if you, if you ho hold down your finger onto the screen, then you can rotate, then you move your mouse and rotate. So maybe it's like that. You, you drag it with one finger, and then you press the next finger, and then when you have the two fingers, you can rotate. Something like that. Although on desktop, then that becomes tricky. On desktop, it, it could be you, you drag it to rotate, and then you hold down control or something to rotate. Ellipse would probably be doable just like instead of having a circle tool, just having you could have an ellipse tool that you just drag it like a rectangle and it becomes an ellipse and then you rotate it the same way that we just described yeah I think that could work mm. 
another thing a few people have been asking for is um the ability to clear pages or to delete pages because right now when you have a when you have one page you it's kind of stuck there forever <laughs> so i guess it's not very nice i guess i don't really notice it because i'm always deleting I'm like I reinst I'm always reinstalling heavy paint for testing anyway, so I I lose all my pages every time. Yep, it saves uh, all the history. You want to see? Um, well, here, let's see. When you go S. So here's all our pages, right? There's 74 pages here. So these are all the paintings from the other days. And, and it saves every stroke. So you can always replay it if you want. You can also skip the replay and go to the end. So here's today. Um. Oops. Yeah, man. Glad glad you're liking Gradient Fill, Barry. Some people have been doing really cool. Actually, Sp I think Sparsalino has got some of the coolest um, Fill Gradient stuff. If you guys haven't seen it yet, I'm going to just bring it up here because I'm excited about it. Let's see. If I can just... There we go. Then we're going to go over here, Instagram, Sparcelino, and yeah, check out, guys, you got to check out Sparcelino. Like, uh, this is all fill, right? It looks like everything here is fill. And then this is a uh, fill gradient over here for these nice uh, ground reflections and the shadows too um, yeah he's he's getting in there and I, I really like this one too looks like fill gradient here for these little um, stretch marks on the on the saran wrap it's pretty awesome This must have been a pain. Yep. Show this guy some love. I hope. 
let's go back to this. Oops, let me close that. There we are. Man, I wish this would show me the freaking chat. two windows up here just for to see what people are saying okay oh god damn it come on youtube get your shit together Okay, we have a lot of ground to cover today with this thing, so I'm going to try to go a little bit uh, turbo mode here and just fill up a bunch of stuff. Just as a first pass so we have like landmarks for everything, we know where everything is supposed to be in general. So Yeah, in this case too, the colors are not uh, perfect, but the important thing is just 
the uh, relationship. So if if this gr this green here, it I don't care what color these two are, just as long as this one is a little bit brighter than this one. So that's the main uh, thing I'm looking for is just one should be brighter than the other. So like, or, or the the floor should be brighter than the uh, pots. Okay, and then there's this streak that goes through the whole thing. Maybe, okay, so each of these pots has kind of two colors to it, or each material has two colors to it. So there's like the light blue color and then the dark blue color for this material. And then there's the light uh, ochre right here, which is actually a little bit lighter than what I have. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. For this light ochre. And then there's a dark ochre, which is way down there. Very green. Blue's a lot darker. So I tend to do this a lot, but it's kind of annoying. So instead of picking for this little white thing in the red thing, I'm going to, I should pick either the, the shadow color or the light color, not a medium in between color. I'm, I'm, so that way I don't have to draw twice. I save myself some time by just picking the light color first in this case, and then go back in with the dark version which I think is something like that what I definitely don't want to be doing is drawing the same edge twice ever so um, and Basically, that means like 
instead of drawing an edge like this and then drawing it again like this see that so I drew that edge twice what I would rather do is first overdraw on one color and then draw once and there's two benefits to that one is that it takes less time second is that that edge is is going to be more precise because you didn't um, you didn't draw it twice. If you draw it twice, it's going to be like a little bit mismatched, right? So if you can limit yourself to drawing in each edge only once, you're gonna save you're gonna save a lot of trouble for yourself. And that's that's something that honestly I'm learning now, <laughs> just by painting without any layers. Is that okay? You 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 kind of have to do things in a specific order. You have to, um, you can save a lot of time by, by doing things that way. Do you guys draw with, uh, do you guys catch yourselves doing that a lot? Like when you draw an edge, do you like see I'm doing it right here I'm I'm drawing I drew that edge and now I have to draw it again <clears throat> because I didn't plan that correctly I didn't go from the back to the front I guess but does that happen to you guys at all So I should probably go from the back to the front now for the third time that I'm making the same mistake over and over and over again. No, there hasn't been. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Right now it's it's very messy and kind of crappy and I don't know. A slider for Z depth. That could maybe work. So each uh, stroke has its own. You can independently change each stroke's uh, depth. Could be cool. Death, but how would that work after every stroke you have you set the depth or how you would have you would be able to select um, strokes later on to change their depth
Okay. So you set the slider before you draw the stroke. And then and then that's it. Once it's done, it's done, right? You're not able to edit them later on. That could work, but I could see it getting less and less useful the the longer the painting goes because then there's like a thousand strokes. Or maybe it would be useful, I don't know. The other another issue with that though is like the way this works now is that there's screenshots being taken every time you you finish a stroke. So we're not actually drawing every stroke live because that would that would cause that would be too um too slow. The computer would start chugging really bad. So with the screenshots that might be difficult to achieve technically. A lot of strokes will be on the same layer. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. Could Yeah, I guess if if all of this stuff was on the same same layer and then all of a sudden you put a new stroke and it's on top, then it's always on top of everything. Maybe it would be like Maybe the slider. <coughs> Maybe the slider just has like five different notches to it. And you can place yourself on one of the five layers. Yeah, just three layers or something like that. Or it doesn't even, maybe it's not even a slider. Maybe it's like three buttons, three dots that you can press to choose the different layers, which I guess is like the same thing as regular layer layer system I don't know though I'm I'm not sure to layer or not to layer that is the question well Is it is this dead? Can you guys see? Are, is stream working? Internet cut out. I think it's working now. I hope. Please uh, say hi if you can see this. I missed all any messages that you guys were typing in there. Anyway, let me get back to painting here. God damn it, YouTube. Are we good? Are we working? Yes, no. Can somebody say something, please? <laughs> uh. do fill gradient here and then chop it away
Um, I don't know if you guys can hear me still, but I'm testing a, a pie menu also, spacebar. So it gives you a bunch of tools all in uh, one key, like uh, fill or circle or line. Are you guys here? Because the chat seems to be very quiet. Is this stream still alive? Hello? <laughs> uh, Oh man, this this stupid chat was like broken until I popped it out. Okay, now I can see. Sorry guys. Um, um, 
is every stroke stored as a separate object? Yeah, every stroke is stored with all its uh, attributes. Um, are you going to stream on YouTube? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think I'm going to stick to YouTube for a while because Twitch was just too difficult. Like, uh, it was really hard to... Uh, uh, there's just more people over here on YouTube for now, I think. Um, don't get naked. Yep, don't worry. I'll, I will spare you from that. <laughs> Sorry about all the technical issues, guys. I'm, like, really figuring all of this out right now. <laughs> Uh, I really, really need to think about doing things in order. Because there's just so many objects in here. So, let's see. Start from the back. Okay, so what about this shape here? Instead of me redrawing this line again with this, then let's see what I should have done in the first place. Maybe, maybe it's it's tricky because there's a gradient there too, but maybe it should be like uh, a gradient. Start overpaint a little bit into the other side. And then get back in and fill to clean up the edges. Something like that. I see something available on PC. Yeah, I'm using PC right now. This is Windows. It's also on Linux and Mac and uh, Blackberry and Palm Pilot and TI-89. But, yeah, check uh, Heavy Poly. There, there should be a link in the description of this video, and you can see where to download it. Okay, same thing with this one. Let's go over here. And here. Okay, this to me is, is too bright, so I need like a dull version of that wall color. Maybe even duller than that. Or darker, sorry, not duller. Darker. There, that, that looks more like it. And that's just a reflection of the wall, right? Duo pot. <laughs> it's impossible. Impossible. We. Um, Orange. 
Did I paint the background? No, that was um uh Muim Satch. He's on Instagram too, guys. Check out M U I M underscore S A J. my third time drawing this shape but that's that's better that looks more like it and I think I need to do the same thing with this one so that's a fill gradient first actually that's fine right there don't need to do any chopping Damn it, redrawing these shapes over and over. There's like this uh, reflection that's coming off the pillar onto this pot. And then 
there's another reflection here that's a little bit orangey coming up into the bottom Looks like a whale tail back here. Free Willy is just jumping over. And drugs are bad, okay? Mm, drugs are bad. Stay in school. Actually, we were just talking the other day about how you should not stay in school. How, um, or Kirk and Darren and a bunch of people were over here working and yeah how how school is not worth it anymore good topic fun fun stuff it's, it's so fun to talk about how everything is everything is shit Yeah, I, I just saw Parasite the other day and I love it. So good. It's so weird. Like, I love how... Um, crazy it is. Oh, do you have a basement in where you live? I would be a, super scared if I had a basement. But luckily we don't have basements in California. Or, wait, do we have basements? I don't think I've seen a basement. Usually they're parking in the basement. Yeah, let me know guys. If you see if you see Fredo Freddy over there sneaking up behind me, please tell me. I don't fully I mean we 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 just got to know each other. We don't really we don't have that trust built up yet. He seems, he seems cool though, so far. Just moved.
ever tried painting in VR? Uh, yeah, I tried Quill one time. Um, yeah. Hello, Alex. From the same director, Me Mur Memories of Murder. Alright, I gotta check that out. I saw Snowpiercer. That's the only, I think that's the only one I've seen from him. Other than Parasite. But yeah, I'm gonna check out the other ones. So he really likes rain, huh? I feel like I'm getting faster. I think so, because the first couple paintings took two hours, usually. But now these are a little bit faster. Still taking a little while, though. I, I've definitely got a long way to go with this whole order of operations thing. I still haven't totally figured out how to how to do it efficiently. I'm just kind of stumbling along. Do you guys have any rules for how you order strokes in painting to make it faster? So far the only rule I have is, or not really a rule, but the only guideline is to go from back to front, but I feel like that doesn't always work, because sometimes there's weird puzzles you have to solve. I need to find like just a rule that works for everything. I want to figure out how to do it without layers. I like this challenge. It's like a puzzle. it's possible because traditional painters do it so I just got to learn
Back to front, then pure randomness and happy accidents. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm... I guess that's, like, my strategy right now, but I feel like there's got to be a... something... Did you use Photoshop when working on Spider-Verse? Yeah, I did. But I also didn't have this at that time. <laughs> I think I would have maybe tried to sneak in a little bit of heavy paint. Do you mainly use shapes when painted, or did you use brush? I'm, I was mainly using lasso and fill, kind of like what I'm doing here. Except in Photoshop, it's annoying because whenever you lasso, you have to then switch the tool to the fill paint bucket and then fill that color and then switch back. So after you do that, like a couple thousand times, you start to get annoyed. That's why I like this fill tool so much because it combines those two or three steps into one step. Saves you a lot of time. Create a shortcut with your Wacom pen. Create a modifier key for both fill and deselect so I fell in the current foreground color. Yeah, but you still have to switch between two tools, right? Or is it just one? <clears throat> Harry, when you when you draw, does it fill automatically like this? Or how do you how does that work in Photoshop? Do you still have to press a key? after doing a lasso? don't need to switch mm, okay that's pretty good I don't understand so so what is it like 
it's lasso tool when you press down your mouse and then when you release the mouse it automatically fills in foreground color and deselects yeah but Luca that's already two that's two presses you have to draw and then you have to press a button every time you want to fill that's that's an extra click every single fill when you're doing thousands of fills that's an extra thousand clicks so yeah after doing the lasso then you press the button on you on your Wacom pen okay there we go so it's an extra click still even with the macro which is annoying you just need to select fill bucket and then hold down your key for lasso make your selection release it would return to fill bucket one press yeah but that's a that's one unnecessary press <laughs> you don't you shouldn't need to do that press I'm all about those clicks, guys. Got to elim I'm the I'm the click exterminator. I mean, certain, sometimes extra clicks are fine for menus and stuff, but for a tool that you're going to use over and over and over, like hundreds, thousands of times, you, you definitely need to optimize those. If it's a menu that you only touch it once in a while, then it doesn't matter. Why did you use this bluish stain <coughs> under highlight on the center pot? You mean this this bluish stain right here? That's that's what I'm seeing on the picture. Oh, you mean this bluish stain? Actually it it the highlight to me looks a little bit blue, but it's it's brighter than this actually might adjust that so this this one right here right I think it's a little bit brighter I think it's something like that oh maybe brighter And then in the middle, it gets super, super bright. Mm. Never mind, I screwed that up even more. Just leave it alone. Um, a lot, listen to a talk in Eindhoven with um, Bastian Grive. He said, too that the process for spider verse was long yes yeah he him and jessica were were painting on spider verse for a long time or yeah they were there for most of the project yeah but it's crazy like when they first started on spider verse their style was completely different like it was very they were photo they were like photo collaging and and you know photo bashing the the typical concept art style and they had to like completely rethink their whole process and and adjust to the style which they did like over the course of the job they completely like flipped it around it was crazy they they learned they changed really fast and learned really fast so that was cool
they are they're good they can do lots of different styles um, Uh, no, I, I studied car design in college. On the witness, they, they worked a little bit on the witness. I think they did like uh, a handful of paintings. But the witness was mostly Yun. Yun Ling was, was doing most of the paintings. Alberto was doing paintings. Um, I, I did a, a little bit of painting and a lot of 3D. Well, I was doing like 3D sets that were constructed out of paintings. Um, so that was kind of a nightmare because it was like doing a 3D painting and you had to cover all the parts that would be hidden by a painting. Or hidden, you know what I mean, it's 3D so you have to paint, like you have to overpaint everything. So when the camera moves you you have to overpaint a lot. Um, that's how Sparth paints with the lasso. Yeah, I think a lot of painters are lasso painters. Um, so yeah, I hope Sparth will use heavy paint someday. That would be cool. Um, how do you deal with material reflections? Is it projected from the painting? Um, sometimes yeah, but sometimes no. So in that in the case of like let's say for example the tiles behind me, the tiles behind my head, there's reflections there. So sometimes if we need to do that kind of thing, we'll just model the tiles and. Uh, Maybe have the painting of like maybe you would paint the color the lighting and the uh the little wear and tear marks on the tiles, like the little orange bits and pieces, but the rest you would leave out all the reflections, all the white highlights, these reflections you'd leave those out, and then you would those would just be real reflections if if they move in the in the camera move, otherwise you just paint it. That's why you'll notice like in the witness, there, there's a lot of shots that are stationary, like they don't move. Maybe 80, 90% of the shots don't move because they're paintings. So if you move the camera, it's gonna screw up the effect. So I was in charge of doing the shots that moved, like where the camera moves a lot those had to be 3d and they had to you know combine reflections and painting and it was just a lot of uh, trickery to get those to work But, um, yeah, those guys, though, like Yoon and the Warden-like people, Peter Chan, Rob Ruppel, Craig Mullins, all these guys are, like, hardcore painters. And I'm just there to sort of learn from, like, how they're painting. I just try to, like, absorb it. 
copy study but they're like those guys are master painters right Diffuse scenes. Yeah, yeah, the diffuse painting is like, that's the thing. They're, the paintings are very stylized, but also extremely accurate with lighting. So it's kind of weird because it, it looks like a cart in a stylized. It looks weird, but also strangely real. Yeah. And that just comes by training, like, they're the painter's eye is so sensitive to light like you can they can see all the colors that we can't <laughs> you know there's so ma many subtle colors that are happening that that most people will just skip over or um, not even notice it's just noticing things and i think that that part takes a long time to develop that's the hard part. Just being able to see what the hell's going on. I took a class, a painting class um, from Peter Chan. And he would always like come by doing reviews and stuff, just checking up on us. And he'd be like, hey, Vaughn, don't you see that orange there in the shadow by the, by the tree? And I'd be like, Smoking, man, what the hell? So it's like, and I seriously just did not see that color at all. There's no, like, dude, there's no orange there. What are you, are you crazy? But, it, no, it's just that these guys can see things. Although I'm not sure if Peter, my theory is that Peter's like slightly colorblind or something. He's got some crazy filter on all the time but but no these guys actually see they see colors they really see colors <sighs> yeah one time i was talking to alberto and he He's just like pointed to a random corner in the room and he's like, yeah, you know, you see that? See that? What color is that wall over there? That white wall to the left of the corner. It's like a little bit red. It's like, yeah, yeah, a little red. And then the wall to the right. It's a little bit green. Yeah. And the other over there. And so we're just like picking out all these little white surfaces on a corner just looking totally crazy and picking out all the the colors even though it's all white wall there's just a million colors in there yeah peter uh, he 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 tends to like to just do gouache and uh, acrylic for his personal work i don't think he likes to do digital painting that much at home because he's painting digitally all day at work. So that's understandable. But yeah, it would be cool to get if he if he used it someday. I need to go bother him. Yeah. I used to sit next to him at uh when we were working on Spider-Verse and he was like he always had these crazy snacks. Like he had a, he had ramen snack. So it was, it wasn't ramen. It was just dry ramen that you eat like chips. It's like a bag of chips that were ramen. And you just munch on that all day. 
I don't know. And he'd always take naps too. <laughs> he would just like. They had these really big window sills at work, so he'd just sit sit on the lay down on in the window sill and take a nap at random points in the day. <laughs> He's a very chill guy. But, I mean, he can take naps and also get his work done, so I guess it's okay. It's amazing how how little work you can get away with at work, I think. Like I think most people that working in in the, in, the, in the animation industry probably spend most of the, their time watching Netflix while they're at work. Like watching Netflix, going on YouTube. So I'll just, uh, there was one point in our production when the story was getting rewritten for like the third time. And so all the storyboarders had nothing to do for a, a while. And they just started playing Settlers of Catan every day. Which was cool, except I was going crazy because uh, you could hear everything. Like the games, the games were getting really intense. People were like shouting and the designers were still over there like trying to do paintings and work on stuff. But it was like a party over on the uh, storyboarder side. So, you know, not to be a party pooper, but yeah, that is <laughs> I, that's why I like working at home. It's, I feel like office, the office life is too distracting. There's too much activity. Alright, it's been almost an hour here, or almost two hours actually, so I should probably go eat something and get the hell out of here. Anyway, it's been fun guys, um, I, I think I'm, I might have to work on this a little bit more on my own, but I, I definitely need to go eat, so thanks for joining in again. Um, if you're following along on the painting, I uh, I hope you'll post it up on the Instagram. Let me let me see if I can show the Instagram. So we're on Instagram at um, hashtag heavy poly. If you hashtag heavy poly, no, not heavy poly, heavy paint. Sorry, hashtag heavy paint, and we'll check out the paintings. And a lot of you guys are up here, so awesome, awesome stuff. Whoa. Ooh. Shit. Okay. All right. See you guys next time. Have a good day.